Today's video is brought to you in 4K with the help of my friends at Elgato Gaming and their 4K capture devices. If you're interested in learning more, click the link in the description below. It's been a while since we've talked about data mined content here on the channel, stuff that gives us a little bit of a look in at the future and what to expect for whatever it is that's being data mined. We covered a lot of this stuff here earlier in the year with Black Ops 4 and how we got an accurate representation of some of the things coming throughout each operation as time progressed because of each update granting those PC files up front and everything else then being time gated for release we haven't talked about much recently in the way of that because there really hasn't been all that much worthwhile to talk about but what if i told you that we now have a little bit of a look in as to the future of modern warfare as crazy as that sounds, it's actually the case. Modern Warfare ended up dropping for the PC beta and the Xbox One beta in early access as of yesterday. Should be by the time this video goes live, open to all players now. I know they extended the early access period a little bit by a couple of hours, but while most players are getting their first hands-on experience with the game, there's some stuff hidden, not necessarily in plain view, but slightly under our noses. That I want to talk to you guys about here today. We're going to break down in this video what we learned about the map listing, the DLC content, matchmaking info, some achievements, and some possible intel on Battle Royale. Now, full disclosure and full transparency, there very well could be some major spoilers here in this video. So if you guys don't want to watch it, totally understand, but just have a fair warning that what we're going to be talking about is some stuff that the general public doesn't really know about just yet. That said, Let's jump into it. The information we'll be covering today comes from the user on Twitter, XLimeTigerX, also known as Brad. So make sure you go show him some love. Twitter link will be down there in the description below for you guys to check it out if you guys want to see more. But let's start out with what we learned about the map listing here for this, because this is probably the most substantial part in terms of quantitative information. There is a ton of names listed off and a ton of maps, it seems, in the game files. Whether or not these are actually all at launch or if they're going to be somewhere where they may not be all MP, whether this is the listing for all campaign levels, all MP levels, all spec ops missions, and so on and so forth, but just all thrown in in the map listing for each of the playable builds of every single facet of the game, we don't know that just yet. But there is well over 60 maps listed 67 in total if you end up taking a look at all the maps listed plus the 2v2 maps that we have apparently data mined here from this so that is a ton of content which also does lead me then to think that this will encompass 2v2 6v6 10v10 20v20 32v32 and maybe there's something after like 50v50 plus all your campaign missions plus all your spec ops missions we have never seen anywhere near 67 maps come a launch and one thing to definitely consider is that 16 of these maps listed are from infinite warfare those including dominion mayday grounded scorch genesis throwback frontier renaissance precinct genesis holiday neon noir frost crusher retaliation and sky dock so when we come across those in the listings keep that in mind that they're likely legacy code but still, that brings the total number down to 51, which is still insane. But that said, the listing here of this, get ready for some scrolling wall of text. These maps include Dominion, Ania Palace, Ania Attack, Mayday, Azir Cave, Azir Cave Knight, Crash, Dam, Dead Zone, Grounded, Scorch, Genesis, Farskaya District, Euphrates Bridge, Throwback, Farida, Smetna Farms, Frontier, Renaissance, Gulag, Hackney Yard, Hackney Yard Knight, Lumber, Malishev, Precinct, Mill Base 1, Mill Base 2, Neon, Genesis Holiday, Oasis, Breakout, Pretrogad, Piccadilly, Port 2, Noor, Prison, Frost, Crusher, Retaliation, Skydock, Gunrunner, Gunrunner Knight, Ravine, Rust, Shipment, Shipment Knight, Terminal, Slums, Spear, Spear Knight, Speed, Stadium, Subbase, Transit, Takedown, Torres, TV Station, and Karst River Quarry. Additionally, 2v2 maps are listed as Cargo, Hill, King, King Knight, which we saw on the NVIDIA RTX trailer, Docks, Pine, Showers, Speedball, and Stack. But like we said, 16 of those are from Infinite Warfare. Others very well could be a lot of Spec Ops missions, and some maybe even be in campaign. The more I think about it, though, I don't know if that would necessarily be the case, but there's probably going to be a lot of Spec Ops missions. So that brings it down to maybe a total of 30, maybe 40 maps that we end up having in MP between 2v2, 6v6, 10v10, and up. And that also could be something that maybe encompasses DLC maps or some base workings of DLC maps we see later 
later on. It also encompasses a lot of, of course, what a lot of people will talk about, remasters of things like Rust and Shipment. That is going to be crazy to relive and, of course, could be something that brings back the nostalgia, but ends up filling out that map total just a little bit more. But legacy code aside, or various different portions of the game, there's still a lot up on deck that we haven't seen and that we may have to look forward to within the full launch of Modern Warfare. Another piece of information found within this game code that gets really interesting is that apparently there are campaign, MP, and DLC spec ops packs things that we'll end up seeing dropped presumably for free because we know that we have those MP maps at least coming for free. That's been confirmed by various different personalities within Infinity Ward and also throughout official press statements and things. But campaign DLC is something that really grabs my attention. If this isn't some weird oddity in the game files and game code, this will be the first time that we don't have a traditional narrative end with the end of the campaign. That we'll end up seeing some expansion packs coming towards this and that's something that is different, but I am definitely looking forward to. A lot of you guys probably don't know this, but I absolutely love the story and narratives of the Call of Duty titles, and I love playing through them. So anything that can get me to come back after just playing it one time through, maybe twice through to get some challenges done, I'm all for that. A little bit of information that came from matchmaking's end of things in this game files and game code is that previously how we ended up having the map voting in pre-game lobbies, this is going to take it a step further because right now, if you guys have played at all within Modern Warfare, you know that there is that quick play system where you can add in or subtract out some of the game modes you do or don't want to play and it'll just end up queuing up all these different game modes that you may want to just for the sake of finding a match faster and trying to pull together as much of a population in a single match making queue as possible that in theory giving you better connection lobbies simply because you're not having to say stretch your connection thin if you're trying to connect to a matchmaking pool that doesn't have as many players as another but to help mitigate this and to help decrease the likelihood of a random game mode every single time it seems like there is going to on top top of a map selection be a mode selection that the players can vote on as well whenever the full game launches based off these game files. That's something that I think is pretty cool. I actually do enjoy that quick play selection in which you can end up just jumping into a random mode, but this will give players that extra little added bit of control compared to just jumping into a random match every single time. Next up, we ended up getting some achievements, whether or not this is for campaign, general MP, and say PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC trophies and achievements for just the general game. We don't know exactly just yet, but what you're seeing on screen right now is a scrolling list of everything detailed so far. There's a bunch of them here that look to detail solely campaign but we can't be sure entirely if it's just campaign information we end up seeing the mention of piccadilly which is a mission that myself and a bunch of other press saw at a behind closed doors event earlier in may that's something we also mentioned in that map listing earlier in the video but on top of that we also see some names and some missions that may stand out to some people those characters being named barkov presumably a villain here at this as the achievement is for spitting on them my guess is the playable character at that time is taken captive and is being asked to give up information to which the character then spits on the villain or maybe vice versa. Maybe it's the bad guy that's taken captive and they spit on one of the playable characters. We also end up seeing the mention of Hadir, who is the younger brother of Farah, in which one of the achievements is stop three APCs with Hadir's sniper rifle. So you start to see where all these come into play. It looks like these are already in the game files and accidentally let slip within this beta. Now the final thing we'll talk about is that of Battle Royale. What's been rumored for quite some time, it was dodged many times by all those at Infinity Ward back in May whenever we got to talk to some of the developers and the team there behind closed doors, even in official capacity whenever they went on record with things like Game Informer's podcast saying that Battle Royale just wouldn't fit in the box, to which it left the opportunity open but hinted at a post-launch edition of the game mode and potentially being made by somebody else entirely. But the game files here indicate strings of code saying BR and also apparently have some listings for locations. Those including Boneyard, Dam, Downtown, Medical or a hospital, a gas station, alcohol, probably a state store if you're in some locations in the United States, Gulag, Gun Store, Hospital, Layover, Lumber, Police Station, Quarry, Storage Town, Supercenter, Train Yard, and TV Station. That could be nothing 
but it could be something, which is absolutely crazy to think about that all of this is right here in the game files. Again, coming back to how much of it actually comes to fruition, how much is legacy code, how much of it is cut content, how much of it is from campaign or spec ops, not necessarily just MP or Battle Royale, we have no idea, but the fact remains that every single time we get a major update for PC, these files indicate something new, and with the first Modern Warfare PC game files out there, it seems like we got quite a bit on our hands. So that said, that's where we're going to wrap it up here. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. What do you think of this? Is this something that you buy into all of this? Do you think most of it is legacy code? Do you think some of it may actually be what we end up seeing with the full launch? And if so, one big thing that I'm curious about, what do you think of all of those maps? 67 levels listed. Again, I think that a lot of these could be legacy code from Infinite Warfare. A lot of these could be crossover from Campaign and Spec Ops on top of what we'll end up seeing for MP across all those game modes of 2v2, 6v6, 10v10 and up but we don't exactly know at the moment. So let me get your thoughts and feedback on all of this kind of stuff. So let me know down there in the comment section down below if you enjoyed the video, though. Make sure to drop a like down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Modern Warfare, updates, news, information, and even leaks like this every so often. We got you covered here on the channel. So hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. And if you guys also want to follow me over on Twitter and Instagram, those are the best places to get connected friends on YouTube. Practically live on both those. If you guys want to strike up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, that link is down there in the description below. But all that's that, now to the way, thank you guys all so much for watching. Mine's an espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.